to, I'm going to make another cup of coffee and I will be right back. You want to know what's crazy? I cannot. It is so difficult for me to use a Keurig. I don't know why that's so hard for me. When I visit my um, dear friend, um, Steph, if you're a vintage Mazami, you will remember her. We went to Montreal together, like right after stay at home orders. She has a Keurig and Keurigs are just so hard for me to use. Like I have no clue. It's one button, one button. And I don't know why it's just such a challenge for me to use. So I'm gonna prepare some coffee and then I will be back over. Ugh, what do I want in a towel roast? I'm preparing coffee. I will be back. Hopefully this time it works faster. I can't see the screen right now. I'm going to come closer. I'm preparing um, coffee. I'm preparing another cup of coffee. And I've just been having a challenge using the Keurig. I don't know why it's like rocket science to me. It's so crazy. Like it's not working now. Bonjour. I'm moving back and forth. I'm in the kitchen trying to get my second cup because you all know like I don't drink coffee I typically do espresso so it's like this huge cup of coffee it's just it's so hard for me to get used to and then I left I was going to bring my pot so that I could prepare my own espresso but I forgot to bring it so I don't I don't think it worked I'm trying to make <laughs> why is this so hard for me This is so crazy. It sounds like it's going to work now. It sounds like it's gonna work. Fingers crossed. <laughs> what? This is so crazy. Like, why can't I use a curate? Bonjour. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> Bonjour. Merci beaucoup for joining. I am at the cabin. And I feel like it's working now. Hold on one second. Now it's gonna make so much coffee. Like I do not need all of this coffee. It's just too much. Like I cannot get used to. Oh, merci for the hearts, merci. I will be back over. I'm just, I'm attempting to make coffee and it's just, it's not been working. I needed to get something out of
just stopped it. It was just way too much coffee, entirely too much coffee. So I just, I stopped it. <laughs> okay, I did not know that was gonna take so long. Bonjour, how is everyone doing this fine? What's today? Wednesday? Bonjour. I am, um, so I have been taking it so easy, so easy today. You all know how I am really, really leaning into this slow living. I totally did um, forget to disconnect my. Um, disconnect my AirPods because I need to edit a vlog for tomorrow. So that's what I'm about to work on now. So initially I got up super early. I totally forgot another rookie mistake. I totally forgot to um, turn off my alarm. So my alarm went off today at the time I typically wake up when I'm at home. Once I wake up, it is so hard for me to go back to sleep. So I got up, I recorded, I haven't posted it on TT, but I posted it on um, the other short form and YouTube. Just a reel of me like spending the morning getting prepared for the day. And then I, um, it, there's a huge feeling good. I had coffee today. Oh, did you decaf? Did you have decaf or whole coffee? It's a dog that just came to the window. Let me tell you all what happened to me last night. Last night I was sitting right here. So I'm in the woods. Last night I was sitting right here. I thought I locked the door. I swore I locked the door. So I have whole coffee. <laughs> So I've been working on, I've been working on a lot, like I'm doing a lot of self work, but I have been working on um, just not reacting so fast, like taking time to think before I react. And that was more so I'm going to be apply. Oh, bonjour, merci. I'm trying to see your name. Caramel, it's hard for me to see. Désolé, merci. So me working on um, thinking before I react, that's more so supposed to be merci for the likes. I appreciate it. Everyone tap the screen, like, like, like. <laughs> me doing that, that was supposed to be an effort for like interpersonal skills, for my marriage, kids, um, just human interaction. Me, me working on thinking before I um, react, that's that's supposed to be for humans. I've been reserving that for humans. When I tell you the Lord works <laughs> in mysterious ways, because I'm so glad I have been working on that because I was sitting right here and it's pitch black because there's no lights. Like back here, there are no lights. It is pitch black. I have the fireplace going bottle of wine is almost empty at this point. I'm watching some funny, crazy show on Prime, just really vibing out, sitting right here with this blanket. The door opens slowly. The door opens. Do you hear me? Can you see me? It's pitch black outside. I cannot see anything. In the cabin, it's pretty much all black. Like a lot of the walls are black. So even the wall I'm looking at right now where the door is, it's all black. The door opens. And for the most part, you know, we look, I guess I say waist level when we look, oh, merci beaucoup for the liked pumpkin. I appreciate it so much. You know, when we look, we look pretty much eye level. So eye level for me right here would have been like a little above the waist for a tall person. I'm sitting here, the door opens slowly. There's no sound. I can tell you one thing, they keep this cabin up. The doors are oiled. 
because this, if this was my door at home, it would have been <laughs> the door makes no sound. It just opens. This and I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm on the phone with the bestie. And I'm looking and I don't see anything because again, eye level, I'm looking up. The dog, it is this huge like bully, bulldog. I'm assuming some kind of big bulldog, like the dogs that look like strong men. It was like a movie. The dog just comes in. I mean, his head was huge and it's just big muscle dog. And I, I said bonjour. It was so weird. I'm like, <laughs> one, why am I speaking to the dog? Two, why am I speaking French to the dog? It just, it happened. So I'm on the phone with the bestie and she said, who are you talking to? I said, a dog just came in. Oh, merci. Oh, there he is. There's my boo. Bonjour. He did not respond. Had I had that last glass of, of wine, finished out the bottle. <laughs> so I don't know why I said bonjour to the dog. But here's what I, I don't know why I did that, but I can tell you what I didn't do. I did not freak out. Typically, something like that, I would have went into cardiac arrest. Like I would have flatlined you all like it would have been bad they would have been investigating like what happened here in this cabin like it would have been bad for all parties involved the door opens i'm looking i don't see anyone it's just like this i'm sitting just like this i don't see anyone and then finally my eyes move to the floor and i see billy the bulldog i don't know his name i just and I said, won't you? And he looked at the table because I had sent a message. I sent a message because when I went to, I'm supposed to be working. See, this is why when I worked in offices, I always had to be separated. Always had to be separated. So I had sent a message to like the property people to see if they had um, a corkscrew. Because I went and I got wine. <laughs> My description, yes. I went and I got a few, a couple of bottles of wine. You know, cheese and crackers. Everything I needed to stay in. Flaming hot Cheetos. Baked. I did not know there was a healthy option. I haven't had flaming hot Cheetos. I can't tell you the last time I had them. But they had a baked version. And I, I just felt so inclined to get it. So anyway, while I was at Target, I messaged the grounds like the owner to see if they had a corkscrew because I didn't want to get back here I'm ubering everywhere I didn't want to get back here and not have a corkscrew and have to you know I don't know I, I could get the bottle open now wouldn't be pretty but so when Billy the bulldog came in the door says the door says nothing I'm the only one speaking at this point because the dog said nothing. The, the door said <laughs> nothing. So the door just opens, not a, not a sound. Pitch black. The wall is dark. This entire wall that I'm looking at, I'm going to flip the camera in a bit so you all can see. I can't see anything. But the fire right here is going. Dog comes in. And I just said, bonjour. And he looked, he went like this, like looked on the table. The corkscrew was laying on the table. I swear it's like he came to check to see if I found the corkscrew. He just peeked in. No, no growl, no bark, no anything. He just peeped his head in, looked at the table like, oh, okay. Okay, you found the corkscrew. Got your little cheese plate. The little crackers. He just looked around. That's all he did. He just scanned the table as if he was coming to make sure I found the corkscrew. It was so bizarre. And I, I just can't believe how calm I am because I'm not an animal person. That's, that's not my thing. And especially an animal I don't know. You know, I'm from the city. Like, we don't play that, oh, they don't bite as a nice dog. No, when we see animals, like, we run. 
So for me to be, oh, merci for all the likes. I appreciate it. For me to be so calm, that is prayer. Like prayers working. I have been working so hard on that. And again, me praying, the prayer for to, to think before I respond and react, that was supposed to be applicable to humans. Bonjour. Bonjour. That was supposed to be for humans. I did not know that this translated to wildlife. Well, not wildlife. It was a dog. <laughs> it was a dog. So, yeah, I... And then I just heard, and then here's the trippy part. Here's where it gets trippy. And I'm, I'm promise we won't work. Here's where it gets trippy. Um, the, it was a bulldog who came in last night. So I'm ready to get in a tub. The tub here is so bomb. It's a clawfoot tub, but it's black. I told you everything here is black. Uh, um, you know, it's okay. Emily and Paris, it's okay. I feel like I could do better, a Jesse a potty. <laughs> but so I'm getting ready. I'm like cleaning the tub. It took me so long today. Like the tub looked perfect. Like it looked so good. But ladies, you know, when we take a bath, like we have to go above and beyond. So I spent like an hour like letting products soak to clean and wiping it, then rinsing the products, then going back. Like it was a process to get the tub where I felt comfortable getting in. So I'm facing the tub and you can see the tub. Let me do a quick spin so you can get some visuals. Well, then it's gonna mess up the tripod, everything. So the tub is there. You all see how it's black. The tub is back there where that, that's the shower curtain, that white curtain, that's the shower curtain. So you all can get some proximity. And so you see how everything is black. So I'm cleaning the tub, getting it ready. And I saw something out the side of my eye walk by the window. I'm like, okay. And it wasn't black. Cause Billy the bulldog who came in last night was black. This one was not black. So I look outside and it's, I feel like it's a husky. I don't really know dogs. It, the dogs that look like um, were, like wolves, that kind of dog, I think that's a husky. So then I am questioning if a bulldog really came in last night. Cause I didn't see the bulldog anywhere. So now I'm like, I'm tripping. Was it really? <laughs> I did not get close enough to see the eyes. But it looks like, a, a, I'm not a fox, what am I talking, a wolf. Like, it's beautiful. But that's not who came into the residence yesterday. So then I'm like, oh my God, I'm tripping. Was it a bulldog? Did a bulldog come in here? When I text with the owners and stuff, yes, there is a bulldog here. So, bonjour. <laughs> if ever a dog should approach you, I did. Yes, they confirmed. If ever a dog approaches you, just say bonjour. Apparently, it's the universal doggy language for them not to do anything. <laughs> How are you all? What's going on? I was going to, so tomorrow, I typically post Tuesdays and Thursdays. I need to shift the AirPods. This is where having... So much stuff connected gets on my nerves because it's connecting to the phone, but I need to edit. Dogs are okay. I'm a cat person. Yeah, I, I'm not a anything. I'm not even a person person. <laughs> a person's person. <laughs> no, I do like people. But that dog was just so chill. And I'm just, I'm like, wow. You know, there's times if you have ever, why are we not connected? It keeps connecting to one of these devices. If you are a spiritual person, it doesn't have to be religion. You all know I don't care about that. Whatever makes you a better person, I'm here for it. But if you are someone who has ever prayed for something, um, manifested something, whatever, however you want to refer to it as, you know that there are times when you question 
well, I can't say, you know, there are times when I question if things are working, if it's, if anything is changing, if it's working. I haven't been in a situation with a human where I've had to flex my skills of um, pause responding. Let me, hold on, let me disable. Okay. Yeah, because my Bluetooth keeps connecting to the phones and I need it to connect here. So I know with me, there are times when if I'm praying for something, I've been manifesting something, whatever it is, you, you question if it's actually working, if these things are working. I've never had the chance to, you know, find out if what I've been praying for has been working. And yesterday it confirmed it. I don't know if it was the wine, the fireplace, me being in a chill mode. You know what? That's a good social experiment. Because I wonder, you know, a lot of times your environment has so much to do with how you react to things. Perhaps since I'm in a calm space right now. Uh, I'm questioning if that's it. I'm questioning if my sense of calm was, I mean, I don't want to discredit myself. I think I am making progress, but now I am questioning, like as I'm chatting with you all, I'm thinking your environment, how you respond to things definitely depends on your environment. Like I know this to be true. And I am questioning if me being so calm, is it because of where I am right now? Had I had, would I have had that same response to a door opening in the dark and some random dog coming in, would I have responded as such if I were in the city? Stay out of the wine. <laughs> Stay out of the wine cabinet. I can't. Perhaps it was the vino that had me all calm. <laughs> This is really, really washed out. I'm, I vlogged in front of, like right behind you all. I'm gonna have to do something with this lighting. And can I tell you all as well, how I had been, bonjour, fabulous finder, bonjour. Let me see, indoor, if I were in the city and the dog came in, I would wonder where did it come from? Wait, it's mine now, <laughs> yes. Yeah, see, and I don't have that. I did that one time with a dog. This dog, it was a Shih Tzu mix or something. A dog just, and I was living like, around the way like if you live in any city I feel like most cities have you know neighborhoods where it's it's still developing I was in that neighborhood <laughs> like it was developing where you had like the where you had I'm trying to see how to say this tactfully and not how I wanted to say it one of those neighborhoods where it's up and coming. So only the brave people would move to the neighborhood because it's still in that transition process. It, gentrification, it, it's sad. So um, that, that's the neighborhood I was living in. I was on the cusp. I was, I was one of the, uh, <laughs> I was like Lois and Clark of the hood, okay? So, um, yeah, this like really cute Shih Tzu mix just came up on my porch and I, um, pre, yes, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> I'm taking, I'm, I'm all for taking the straight. Yeah. So I did that one time. I actually, yeah, she came onto my porch and was just so cute. And this is when the husband and I were dating. And I had flirted with the idea of wanting a dog, but I travel so much. And pre stay at home orders and having the second baby, I traveled all the time. 
like I was in in a month, I would be in like three different countries. I traveled so much and I wasn't online then. Like I wasn't creating content that I really should be editing this vlog. I wasn't online then, but I traveled so much, at least like three countries a month. And so I wanted a dog, but the husband, then boyfriend, we were dating. This video just kind of looks so washed out. Am I going to use this video? I was telling you all a story. Um, yes, yeah, so the husband, I had meant the boyfriend at the time. I mentioned to him that I, um, I was like, oh, I think I want a dog. And he's not a dog person. He's a cat person. And he said how horrible of an idea it was, which is true, because I traveled so much. So sometimes I would take the dog with me, but it's really expensive traveling with the dog and especially last minute. So when the dog showed up on the porch, I opened the door and the dog was there. Beautiful dog. I thought the boyfriend, my husband and I, when we were dating at the time, happy hump day. Oh, merci. Merci for the gift. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for that Burberry Diva. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I thought he was surprising me because that's the kind of stuff he would do when we were dating. I mean, he still does it now, but when we were dating, he would always like if I mentioned something I wanted, I would go to work and it would be in the office. I would come home and there would be a delivery like he's he's that kind of guy. So I remember vaguely telling him at one point that I wanted a dog. So when I opened up the door and I saw the dog, I just thought, oh, okay, he gifted me a dog. Like it would have been nice to ring the bell or something. Like it was just so, I was waiting for a friend to come. That's why I opened the door. And um, I ended up taking the dog and I called him like, hey, like you, you didn't leave instructions or anything. What am I supposed to do with this dog? And he says, what dog? I said, there's a dog on my porch. And of course, because I was a serial dater, okay? Like you all don't want the single Jesse Chronicles, okay? I, I kept a rotation. <laughs> so he's just so petty. The husband's so petty. He's like, yeah, probably one of your other suitors gifted you a dog. I'm coming over to see the dog. So he came over to see the dog. And he's like, no, this dog belongs to someone. Like you didn't look at the collar. It, it, this dog belongs to someone. I contacted everyone in the vicinity that I could see. And I had never seen the dog, so I knew it wasn't, like, right on my blog. Um, I feel like we put up posters. I had Juju the Camera Kid help me make posters. And then I called the Humane Society because the dog had a chip. Animal Control came and got the dog. No one ever, like a week later, the dog was still there. No one had ever claimed the dog. So I called to check, like, hey, had anyone come and pick up the dog? And they said, no, the dog is still here. I said, I want the dog. So I went and got the dog. And for a really good price, like if you've ever gotten an animal from the Humane Society, which I recommend, I'm not an animal person, but I, there's so many, like going there, I saw just how many stray animals, you know, were in need of adoption. So I felt really good knowing that they gave me a good deal, did the chip, all of everything she needed to be well. I did not realize how much responsibility having a dog was. And this isn't even me traveling. The whole walking a dog, like yes, I take walks every day, but I can choose not to. If I decide one day I don't wanna take a walk, I don't have to. When you have a dog, you have to. Um, the dog had like an eye infection. It was so expensive going to the vet. Like there were just so many costs that I did not, I wasn't aware of with regards to animals. And so that's why now baby Chena wants a dog so bad. And the husband says, no, absolutely not. Because I'm going to be the one responsible for taking care of the dog. Burberry Diva. I had my dog for two years and I just gave her away in January because it was too, it's so much. It's so much. When I had cats, they came from ASPS. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm China. Yes. 
Um, hey, Tommy. Hi, Jesse. Yes, about the dog because there are so many homeless dogs. I got both of mine from. Yeah, I would. I recommend everyone to definitely, if you are considering getting a dog, to do the Humane Society. You get a really good price um, for really nice because that dog would have been so expensive. Had I got a Shih Tzu blend, whatever would have been so expensive. But, and you're just doing a good deed. Like there are so many animals that need adopting and they had um, like courses and things to teach you about the dog, how to take care of them when they needed shots. It, it, it's just really good. I think it's a good choice if you are going to do that. Keish, bonjour, yes hit the like button <laughs> i will stick to being a rich dog and look i'm i'm here for it dogs are it's a lot of responsibility a lot of responsibility let me see tony the humane society also offers i can't see that word living for your animal shots and less expensive yes yeah, I got, I was able to get everything done at the Humane Society. When she came home, she was up and running. It was just grooming. Just grooming. Oh, yes. Yeah, dogs are a lot of responsibility. And so as much as I want the husband, I'm at work today. I can't be a bouncer. Oh, yeah. See, the last time Keish... Keish was in here. This is Balls of Beauty. If you are on Insta, follow her. She is just such a vibe. But she was the bouncer the last time. I mean, she was kicking him out like Martin, okay? Get that step in. Because folks start getting crazy in the comments. Keish was, I mean, windmilling, okay? <laughs> So I'm working on, um, I, I'm not working on it. I need to be. I recorded a vlog that I am going to post tomorrow because this vlog, like my stay here, I don't want to rush. I could get it done. It's two o'clock now. I don't want to rush. I don't want to rush to have it edited because I'm, I'll be leaving in a bit. I am going to go out. I had a really slow morning. Um, I, you know, did some filming for the reels and different short form videos, took a nice long bath because the bathtub here, that's what we were talking about. The bathtub here, it's a clawfoot tub. It's black. It's so sexy. So took a nice bath after like hours of preparing it, getting it clean enough where I felt comfortable to be in and just chilling. I said I wanted to do a slow morning. Initially, I was going to just go out really early. Like there's a lot of boutiques and things, but you all know I'm not shopping. I still can record and show you all um, some things that I find, but I'm more so interested in going. I'm to a few galleries. Going to a few galleries, um, just as I did in Delaware, I want to do um, a really nice restaurant. I'm not in a hotel this time, so it's not like I can just go downstairs. So I will have to go out. So I'll, I'll see the town, but I want to do, I want to explore more of the nightlife. So some of the galleries that I looked at, they stay open later. And I want to give people time to get home from work. That's a thing too. Like, People are at work and I want to see people. I want to meet people. I, I, I want that. Like if I traveled somewhere, I want to actually meet people. So I'm going to wait till later in the evening with the hopes that some people are out happy hours. Some people are at the galleries and I can, you know, like actually interact. So yeah, that's why I said, well, I'm going to just chill. There's no need for me to rush. So I recorded like a chat video today because I knew I do not feel like doing extensive editing. Clearly, I don't even feel like editing this because I've just been chatting with you all. But this video will post for tomorrow. Yeah, the slow mornings are such a vibe, such a vibe. Like, I am really leaning into this. If you, if, if there is an option for you to do this, even if it's one day a week, you don't have to go anywhere. You can be home, but just slow. And by slow morning, I mean 
waking up, I still wake up at the same time. Like today I was up so early because I forgot to turn off my alarm. So I still got up early, but I slowed down. I had so many issues learning how to use this Keurig. I don't know why. It's one button. There's one button on this machine. Why is it so complex? And when I visit my friend, she has one just like this. And I can never get it to work. Like, it, it takes forever. And then I had to stop it from making coffee because the coffee was like the size of my bun. I left my espresso maker. I have a, um, a stovetop espresso maker because... I don't like coffee. And I know when I say that, people are like, what? But coffee and espresso is two different methods. It's two different experiences. I'm not a coffee drinker, but with the Keurig, you know, it's just coffee. So once I finally got it to work, it just kept running and running and running. I just opened it and took the coffee. I'm like, this is crazy. But yeah, if you are able to have a slow morning or even created. I'm thinking about like when I was working in the office, I, you know, I shared this a million, million times with you all. I um I was on the train at about 4:30 or so, like super early in the morning. So I could have woke up later and just rushed because, you know, getting that extra 30 minutes of sleep or whatever, it doesn't take me long to get dressed. But I woke up earlier, one, I had just started content creating, so I will record my OOTDs. But also because, um, what was the other reason? Oh, slowing down so I didn't have to rush. But now that I'm not in the office, being able to really slow down, it just, it puts you in a better space. I cannot tell you all enough. This self-work that I'm doing is so dope. Like the prayer, the really tapping in, to my mental and emotional state, being very, very cognizant of my feelings and and um, taking accountability for things, just the awareness. It, it's unlocked a new level in me. Like I cannot describe how I feel most days. You know, there still are days when I am like the exact opposite of peace. But for the most part, I'm having more days like this where I'm feeling that sense of, um, one, I know everything's going to be okay. I know the universe, God, Allah, whomever you praise, I don't care. Just be a good person. Knowing that I'm going to be provided for and taken care of. Um, just being more, more confident in my decisions where I'm not constantly feeling the need to get validation, seek validation from other people. There, there were times, and I still do it a bit today, like the bestie helped me pick which font I was going to use for my um, video today. Bonjour, bonjour, Kirby Sophisticate. Um, yeah, just being more, um, more thorough in my decision making and more confident in it like not needing a resounding yes a resounding round of applause not needing everyone to understand what it is that I'm doing and it feels good it feels so good like y'all better come and get one of these <laughs> oh my goodness Nadine I asked for oh let me get closer y'all know I can't see asked for four eight hour days at work and my supervisor laughed at me i need a slow day at home yeah keep 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 asking stay on them i'm also enjoying a new season of life that may include me not being in control or knowing yeah it, it's and you know monument mom we we talk offline but it's it's a vibe being able to say i don't know and not feeling that I have to, I have to find an answer that's going to appease you, an answer that's going to make you feel comfortable. It's a vibe. Like just, just not knowing, that is a luxury. So many of us, we we've never had that. We've never had the the option 
of saying, I don't know. We had to know everything. We had to have everything figured out. So if you can be in the space, it's, it's a lot. Like right now, what I'm, what I'm going through willingly, like some things, I pick somebody else, get somebody else to do it. But the, the emotional and mental work and spiritual work that I have been doing, you know, I'm willingly embarking on this journey and it feels good. I don't know what's to come of this. Like, I don't know, but I, I love the way it feels. I love how I feel. I'd say 85 to 90% of the time, that's high for me anyway. For me, that, that's really high to feel like that. Y'all, I haven't even done anything on this vlog. There's just so much light. I was by the window when I was recording this. It's so odd recording, I'm editing on this MacBook now. It shows you how, like how soon we forget. Because before the husband got me my desktop, my Mac, my iMac, this was all I used. And this was such an upgrade for me editing on my phone. And now I'm like, this little thing, I can't even do anything. <laughs> he said I had two more years to retirement i can get my slow days then oh he is a hater <laughs> no see if you can do i know i used to um oh merci Barbara diva i see something you sent me a rose oh merci i appreciate it thank you thank you thank you i appreciate it so much that that makes me so happy I'm going to buy, buy a cocktail tonight when I go out. Happy hour. <laughs> yeah, but it's um, it, it's super chill. Like, just do what you can. Do what you can with what you have without creating additional stress. If you can work an extra hour every day so that you can have, like, every other a day off every other week, um, I know you may, most people don't want to hear this, but waking up even 30 minutes earlier, that makes a big difference with your ability to slow down. Being prepared, being prepared really is a game changer. So taking that time out one day a week, it doesn't have to be Sunday, taking a day out of the week to prepare for the rest of the days know what you're going to wear having that out the way so that in the morning or night whenever you work you don't that's one less decision you have to make that that's what so many of us we have decision fatigue we're tired of making decisions we make decisions about everything what am i going to wear and the, it's small decisions that you don't think you're making which is why you're exhausted throughout the day what I'm going to what am I going to wear? What am I going to eat today? What am I going to watch on TV? What am I going to do? You know, it's it's all these questions. But if you start preparing getting your clothes together. This is why with my clients I catalog everything for them. Some of my clients go to the extreme where I just make a month of of looks for them. So all they have all they have to do is just pull the pieces. Know what you're going to wear. If you're a meal prep kind of person, meal prep so that your meals are done. Get input from people. Like yesterday when I was going live, I inquired with you all, what should I watch? They have Amazon Prime here. What should I watch? 
I didn't feel like making a decision. I didn't want to go through. It's so much to consume. I didn't want to sit here going through click, 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 reading a million and four descriptions, watching a million and four trailers. Ask people who, you know, hey, what's a good show I should watch? You know, I have a day off. I have the weekend to myself. What's a good show? Be prepared. So then when it's time for you to enjoy your day of leisure, whatever it is, you're not exhausted trying to make decisions on how you are going to relax. <laughs> it's too much. I agree. It, it's too much. Like we, it's, 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 it's exhausting. We make so many, it's those micro decisions that you don't realize. What perfume am I going to wear? What, what, you know, drink am I going to get from Starbucks or whatever coffee shop? What, you know, just a lot of decisions to make. Do all that you can to reduce those decisions, especially if time is of the essence. If you know in the moment, oh, merci, Burberry Diva. Burberry Diva is hooking me up over here. That means the world to me. Thank you. It really does. This this makes me so happy. I appreciate you so much. Yeah, just just do things that you can to to prepare yourself. If you if there's an option, small things because it's it's those small things that leads to big change. It is. So if you have um, a coffee machine that you can program. I've seen people do that. I don't have that, but I've seen people where you could program your coffee maker. So at X amount, at X time, it prepares the coffee for you. Boom, one less decision you have to make. You had your clothes laid out for the week or at least three days, boom. One less decision you have to make. Your food is already prepped in containers. You know what you're going to eat. Start like trying to automate those small <laughs> decisions so that you're not exhausted when it comes to you making big decisions. That's why so many of us, it's so hard for us to make decisions because we are exhausted. We're exhausted. We are exhausted. Moody, I've missed you too. I prepare my lunches for work. I take my clothes um, out. Yes, the night before. Definitely do it. Definitely do it. Keish, why can't you be that bouncer? I have to invite all these people to the block party. Moody, can I make you a moderator? Oh, merci, Tony. I appreciate it. Moody or anyone, can I make you a moderator? Kirby Sophisticus says, I have overslept twice this week and it's only Wednesday. It's ridiculous how exhausted. Those, that's, that's why. A lot of times that is the reason why. That is, okay, yeah, it's not too much popping over here. I don't get too many. I'll make you one. Um, actually, I don't know how to do it here. I don't know how to do it here, but I'm glad to know that you are willing. <laughs> Merci, Tony, for the, for the gift. I appreciate it so much. I thank you. Thank you. Let's celebrate the first super on the live stream. Merci. Moody, can I make you one a moderator so yeah i clicked your name but it's not coming up let's see oh yep there we go just did it okay we should be good to go i appreciate it so much tony <laughs> Yeah, so create, create those kind of things. Create uniforms, so to speak. If you bonjour, create uniforms. If you, you know, I'm not um, someone who's against that. 
if you, um, if through the week you need essentially a uniform to help streamline your life, do it. Do it. Do those things. Like I, you know, I love a good OOTD, but if the choosing what you're going to wear is stressing you out, go find your go-to piece. Get you some classic go-to pieces that does not require you to think and have to be creative and all of those things. I work a public service job and I'm a supervisor, so I have to deal with a lot of choices. So I definitely make a checklist. Yeah. And especially if you, a lot of us, if you're the head of household, this isn't even including outside of your home. You are, I'm 30 seconds into this vlog all this time and I have not been editing. If you, just before you leave your house, just, I want you all to think about it. Think about it. How many decisions you make before you even leave your home. If you work outside of your home, or just work before you clock in, before you log on, before you, whatever you do, just think about how many decisions you have to make for yourself. Now, think about if you have a dog. Think about if you have children. You are making so many decisions that you do not realize that you're making. What am I gonna have for breakfast? What am I going to, like, it's a lot. Where am I going to park? Which way am I going to go? Because, you know, traffic, so many decisions. What, what earrings am I going to wear? It's a lot. I wear the same seven outfits to work on rotation. I have a self-imposed dress code for work and perfect. And I love that. I absolutely love that. And as someone who, you know, so much of my career and everything else is style-based, I am an advocate for that. Do what is going to make your life easier. We are not about the struggle around these parts, okay? We are not about creating drama. Adding is just so many, yeah. Adulting is just so many variables, it's so much. Adulting is so ghetto. It's set up so ghetto. Oh, yes. And we take them micro decisions for granted. And yeah, and that's why we're so tired. That's what Kirby Sophisticate was just saying. It's Wednesday and she's she's overslept three times. We are exhausted. There's so many decisions to make. So many. I mean, even something like this. Who am I going to watch? Who's live? Am I, am I going to watch? What? 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 platform am I going to get on? Am I going to look on this app or this app? What am I? There are so many decisions to make that you do not realize that you are making on a day-to-day -day basis. And it is exhausting. Absolutely exhausting. And that's before we get to adulting. That's before the bills, the kids, household stuff. If you, if you are a homeowner, mon do. What repair am I going to do first? What, you know, the car, what, what gas station? It just, it's wild. What to watch is just so much work when I'm just used to having nine channels. Exactly. We think we want options. We think we want options, but we have too many sometimes where you're just like, forget it. Like just whatever. doing three more seconds <laughs> yeah I am all about creating an easy life however you can I'm editing you all so much for that I really do I tell you all this all the time whatever you all send me 
it it just makes me so happy like it really really does like every everything that you all send me i appreciate it so much yay merci <laughs> i do i appreciate it so much because you all know like i'm doing this i'm doing this on my own betting on yourself when you don't know is next level insanity okay i cannot i cannot express that enough betting on yourself when you are just like not sure of your next it is next level like <laughs> it's next level insanity next level faith next level just belief just knowing like i i know i'm going to be good i know whatever it is wherever it is i decide to you, exhaustion we, we were just talking about that the exhaustion that is one of the things i having such a you are i'm still not working this is why i can't be in the office having such a oh merci eric you're a beautiful spirit. You remind me of a lovely foster mother I had as a child. You radiate happiness and your space is cozy. I wish you peace and happiness. Eric, I appreciate that so much. And I'm so delighted that you had a foster mother that was so kind. Um, Tony, let's see. It's the best thing, especially since they're considering shutting down TT. And many people use that platform for their only income. So you're ahead of the game. This is true. I've been keeping up on that. I've been keeping up on that. And, you know, this is one of the challenges I continue to have as someone who is on social media, but not of social media, if that makes sense. Like, I, I live in the world, but I'm not like of the world as my grandma would say. But when I saw all these um, petitions, all these petitions, all this legislation, all this, you know, people, oh, sign here, sign here, rally here. We have other issues. We have bigger things we need to be rallying to petition for. We have bigger concerns in this country like much bigger. And I am saying this as someone who social media is so much of my income, so much of what it is that I am doing right now. And I am saying this, that is wild. We have real issues. Like, come on, we're lobbying, we're legislations and petitions and stuff. We have some real things we need to be like collectively working on. And that is just not one of them. I'm sorry. Like I'm 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 sorry that I'm not sorry. <laughs> like that's wild. And so this is why my page keep getting <laughs> suppressed and everything else. But let me, we, we going to talk about that another time. We have, we have some bigger fish to fry, I should say. We really do. Like the fact that I'm, I'm driving heading to the train station. And here it is in the nation's capital, tents, people living in tents. People, like, I just, I just remember as all, oh, merci, Margie, I thank you so much for the super chat. Merci for that. It just, it, it like, it bothers me. And I promise I'm not going to cry, but I get so emotional about stuff like this when it comes to um, just humanity, 
how we see one another or don't see one another as someone who like experienced homelessness in my life. Like I'm blessed that, you know, I didn't have to sleep outside, but there were times in my life when I was unhoused. Like I didn't have a permanent address. I'm staying with this aunt, this cousin, like wherever I could. And so, so many people have experienced that, but because we're not outside on a bench in a park, you don't see that as, you know, being unhoused, but that is. Not having a, a, a mailing address, not having a drawer, a closet, like that's being unhoused. And as I'm just driving to the station, and to see this, and to see this at the nation's capital, like these tents are, like you could see the capital, the U.S. capital. You can see community of tents. And somebody walks up to me wanting me to sign a petition for... The disgust, the disgust I felt, and look, the, the app is freezing now, the other one. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, you, you can't be serious right now. You cannot be serious right now. You're coming to me, you're coming up to me to sign a petition for... For a leisurely, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think how to speak cryptically. You're coming up to me at the nation's capital. I'm parked by the capital. I'm walking by the capital. And you're approaching me to sign a petition for, for social media. But as we stand here, and this person is trying to convince me to, to sign this petition, I just counted 10 tents, people unhoused, shopping carts filled with, I'm sure, all the worldly possessions that these people owned. And you want to talk to me about signing a petition. I was so disgusted. And the person was, you know, well, it may not be a big deal for you, but, and it, it, like, you know, this person doesn't know that I'm on social media. Like, if anyone, it, it's a big deal for me when most of my income comes from social media. But in this space, and I've always been like this, I've always thought bigger than myself. I've always, I've always, to the point where, you know, I've been that person to sacrifice myself for the greater good for other people and things. And not that I'm advocating for that because we definitely have to, to, to take care of ourselves. But this person is looking at me, the person who wanted me to sign the petition was looking at me as if, one, I'm sure they were, thought I worked on the hill because I was up on Capitol Hill the way I'm dressed. I'm sure they just saw it as, oh, she doesn't care about social media because, you know, she's federal government or working wherever, whatever. I care a great deal about this. <laughs> However, I care much more about these other issues affecting people standing right next to us, unhoused, hungry, you, you have children who only eat when they're at school. The fact that you can't even, most people can't even, most people, if you had an emergency, wouldn't even have $500 to, to make a repair for their car, for their homes. Like you're worried about this app 
sir, we we about to not have internet. Pe people aren't going to be able to afford internet at the rate we're going right now because people are going to have to start choosing between food and Wi-Fi, which isn't a public utility right now. Like, don't, you all do not get me started because I get, I get so, oh, merci. I'm trying to see your name, Mel. Merci for the roses. I, I just get so passionate about stuff like this and I'm really trying not to cry, but I get so upset, just so upset when I see, when I see things like this, like how short-sighted, how, Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. Y'all know I have a rule about not crying online. But I just, I get so passionate about this stuff. Like, it, it was just so disgusting. Like, I'm looking, like, we are right here in front of these tents. And I am very active when it comes to politics, extremely active. Like, I don't care. I will vote for the head cashier at Target. If it, if it was an option for me to, to vote for, for the head cashier, I would do it. Surveys, I'm that person. If you have ever worked at a call center and you called my home, you, you got your numbers up because I'm, I'm going to tell you how I feel. I don't talk about a lot here as to stay neutral and to be a safe place. But I am very opinionated and very active, like offline with, with a lot of things. And that is just, I mean, it's ridiculous. The fact that we still have girls in this country who, when they come on their cycle, can't go to school because feminine care products are so expensive. Like here in the U.S., when I was living in South Africa, I started working with, um, it wasn't even like a nonprofit. I would physically like go to Soweto to drop off. Like I would have friends shipping feminine care products. Whenever I came, whenever I would go back, suitcases filled with feminine care products that I would give away like to girls and to schools. Do you know how much school that is you're missing? If you have to miss school every time you come on your cycle because you, you don't have proper protection, do you know how much school that is that you lose? Do you know how that puts you back with your education? And we know that education for so many people, that is what is going to unlock financial stability for you to get to get higher education to get higher income jobs to it's 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 a cycle it's so much so no i'm not sounding no daggone petition about this madness why is it even <sighs> let me stop i digress i digress i digress because <laughs> we were supposed to be keeping it light Oh, goodness. I digress. I digress. And how about they kick the patients out of St. Elizabeth? And now, yeah, don't even get me started when I tell you mental health. That's like i go hard when it comes to advocating for mental health as someone who has struggled with mental health my entire life as someone who grew up with daggone sociopaths like mental health substance abuse all of these things they all tie in, especially in certain communities. Certain communities, things just manifest differently. So many of the people in my community who 
we're dependent on drugs. It was mental health. It was mental health. Because when you're afraid to even talk about mental health or when, when you, if you are brave enough to even speak about mental health, the people in your community attack your spirituality, your faith, your connection to the higher source because to, to have a mental health instability to some is to say that you, you don't have faith. Your faith isn't strong enough. You're not praying hard enough. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. So what do most people do? Most people stop, stop talking about it. But what becomes socially acceptable? Drinking, illegal substances that has ruined communities. And it, these all stem from mental health. Oh, merci. You are so right. It's sad, but true. it's so true. Like, I wish you all have to meet me offline. Like, anyone who knows me offline knows how, like, how hard I go. Like, it is, I go so hard when it comes to just, certain a lot of things but some things I am so passionate about and I have zero tolerance when it when it comes to the nonsense like that is my thing like I have always I've always always I say oh merci <laughs> you're gonna make me cry I don't even know what that heart is Mel merci thank you so much like, I just, there's so much that I want to do. Like, so much that I know I'm going to do. Like, there are so many nonprofits that I want to start. There's so many things that I want to do. Schools. Like, I want to open schools. Like, have schools for, you know, not just children. Like, having just safe spaces for adults. Because so many adults have to unlearn. Like, we, depending on what generation you're in, you are trying to unlearn so much. And so many of us grew up with parents that had mental health issues, but they went untreated. So many people today, which is why I just extend so much grace because you don't know what people are going through. So many of us right now, we are doing the best that we can considering how we were brought up the our environments our our households like so many things we are unlearning like that is hard it is hard having to be a productive citizen a productive human while you're you're trying to earn a living you're you're wanting to be a good person if you're raising kids and you're still trying to raise yourself. Like, we're, I'm, I'm unlearning so much. I am unlearning so much. And it's hard. It is so hard. Even if my mayor was here, even if my mayor was still here, if my mother was still here with me, I would still be in this journey because I started this journey before she passed. And I, I had to tell her, I didn't, I didn't, I had to share with her how I didn't want her to feel that what she did was wrong. She did the best that she could. If you were fortunate enough to have a, a decent caretaker, it doesn't have to be a parent. Eric shared about his foster mom. If you were fortunate enough to have decent guardians and caretakers you you have to extend grace in knowing that they did the best that they could you know a lot of stuff they never got to unlearn you know they they were dealing with their own things they did the best that they could and that's what I had to share with my mayor when I started just really digging into um like shadow work I'm really like going to therapy, really um, exploring 
a spirituality outside of what's normal for my family started doing those things i didn't want her to think that it was a slight to her i let her know like you i know you did the best that you could and like you are so much of the reason that i am the woman i am today you letting me explore you you know you doing these things however girl <laughs> and we laughed we laughed when i said that to her um Curvy sophisticate. When you get older, we understand it's easy. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Exactly. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. It's so easy. It's so easy. The shoulda, coulda, wouldas. But I mean, we're we're doing the best that we can. But there there's so much that I want to do. Like I want, I want to do. Like I, I have things that I want to do, of course, with the youth. That's always been a passion of mine. I used to be a teacher, but I quit because I knew I was going to get fired because of how opinionated I am. Anyone who has ever worked with me know how opinionated I am. I am that annoying coworker who one keeps talking and doesn't, you know, look, I'm still I'm still on 31 seconds in this vlog. I am that annoying coworker who does anyone have any questions? My hand is going up and everyone, "Oh my god, Jesse." You're going to know how I feel. It will not be a secret. So, yeah, I, I quit teaching because I knew I was about to be fired because what they were doing was wrong. What they were doing, I don't, I do not subscribe to people taking advantage of other people. Like, I just don't. Even when it comes to me losing out, me being like unemployed. And you can't get unemployment when you quit. Well, I don't think you can. Well, they didn't let me get it. So having to figure out, like, dang, I took up for the homies. Now what? <laughs> but God provided. Things ended up working out really well. They did. Yep, my hand stays up. Exactly. I always ask questions to open up communication. Yes. And it, you know, and it does. And as someone who does a lot of public speaking, it shows the presenter, the speaker, that one, you were listening. But two, you know, don't be, I, I am, that. that is what, I'm going to say separate me from a lot of adults. And this isn't like a superiority kind of thing. I don't mind looking stupid, so to speak. I don't mind, oh, you know, that's a dumb question. I don't mind that. I don't mind not knowing. And that's something else as an adult. You know, we're supposed to have the answers. So we don't want to look dumb. We don't want to look stupid. We don't want to ask questions. We don't want to do it because we're, we're adults and we're supposed to have the answers. I don't care about that. I don't care at sucking at stuff and failing, so to speak. I, I try stuff all the time. I'm always changing careers, always exploring things. Sometimes I'm really good at what I, you know, set out on. Other times it's like, girl, <laughs> that was not your niche. <laughs> that wasn't it. God did not select you. <laughs> and so it, it's all good. I was taught to always, yes, always. I always have, that's just how I am. So things like that for my, like I want, I want to have a, like a school for adults for us to go to. And it, it's not, you know, always, I just like, I have so many ideas. Like I, I want us to, I want to have a space for adults where it's kind of like a boarding school, so to speak. <laughs> like a boarding school for adults where we, you know, in 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 where it's not directly in relation to something bad happening. You know, a lot of times when you have these centers and things for adults, it's because, um, you know, substance abuse, um, domestic violence, it, it's because bad things happen. You know, like, I don't want all, I don't want the only time good can happen to you as if something bad happened first, if that makes sense. It makes sense in my head. <laughs> 
And the executive summary is going to make sense. But if that makes sense, like I, I don't want you to be down and out. Like you don't have to be down and out to, you know, come to this institution that I'm going to build. Like I know, like, I don't want that. I want, you know, people like me, like what I'm experiencing right now. I know that this, this is happening for a reason. Me making these big jumps, me learning to be comfortable with being uncomfortable, me exploring different careers, different options. I know that this isn't an accident. And I want to share this. This is such a blessing for me to be sitting here right here with you all right now. This is such a blessing for me to be able to decide I want to do something different. I realize the magnitude of that, especially if you don't come from a wealthy family, you don't come from a wealthy family, you didn't, you know, marry into a crazy, ridiculous, rich family or something. Just for the most part, quote unquote, normal, just regular, smegular, degular people don't get to just do that, to just decide I want to quit my job and find my way in life, you know, explore other options. I want I want to build a space where other adults get to do this, too. So, you know, we, we have the space, you know, where your housing is going to be provided for. Oh, merci, T. Having the space where, you know, your housing is taken care of. If you have kids, your kids are going to be taken care of. Like giving you a time, like we all need a gap year. I don't care how old you are. We all need a gap year and you shouldn't have to wait until you're retired and, you know, and this, this is no slight to anyone who is retiring soon, but I look at working in funeral homes. I'll give you this example. When I worked in funeral homes, this is the one story I heard all the time. Oh, you know, mama always wanted to travel the world, but she was waiting until she retired. Do you realize how many people like pass shortly thereafter retiring, especially in the U.S. when you have to work until you're like a thousand? And the threshold for retirement keeps getting pushed back because things are just so expensive. Yeah, it's like. Oh, merci, Tony. I appreciate the badge. Thank you for joining. Have a good day. We all need that. We all need just a, a year to, to just figure it out. Explore. We all need that. And so many of us were never afforded that option. I wasn't, and that's why I'm rebelling now. <laughs> Perhaps if I had had the luxury to do this after, you know, high school or something, you know, I wouldn't be out here wilding. <laughs> oh my God, there are so many people who cannot afford to retire. Yeah, exactly. T said, I'm in my 50s and I'm still exploring. You should never stop exploring. I told myself, it's three o'clock. This is wild. I have edited 31 seconds of this vlog. How long have I been chatting? 84 minutes? This is wild. If I had a gap year, this would have never happened. I would be so laser focused. <laughs> yeah, but never stop exploring. And so many of us cannot explore because exploration typically doesn't pay, okay? And this is why I tell you all, I thank you so much. When you all send, I don't care, as I mean, there are times I get $2 cash apps. I love it. Merci. I say that all the time. I appreciate it so much. And this is why so many of us cannot explore. Because exploration, unless you're Lois and Clark, <laughs> typically doesn't come with a salary. And so you're just not able to do it. 
I want, I want to present this opportunity to whomever wants it. That's one of my goals. That is one of my goals. We all deserve this. We deserve to have that space to explore. And we should not have to wait until, you know, like I said, at this rate in the States, you retire at a thousand. You know, you're physically unable to do so many things. Mentally, you're burnt out by the time you're 12. How, how are you supposed to just enjoy this, this life after you have worked yourself into the ground? for years like you're ready to meet your maker by the time you retire because you are just so exhausted like it's it's so it's sad it's so sad and no boy wants me to sign a petition about some app i believe in you all oh, merci <laughs> Yeah, it's not healthy. Balance is everything. Mercy, this um, it's a dress. I'm gonna record an OOTD if I ever finish doing. <laughs> if I ever finish this, I'm I'm gonna record an OOTD. It's a dress from my style, my subscription box. Shameless plug, but I have a monthly subscription box where I think it's fifty U.S. dollars, where you get unlimited pieces. It's a rental, so you just go on the website and click the things you rent mail it to you, you wear it, you ship it back. But this was one of the dresses. It's gonna look really cute. I know it looks a bit matronly with me sitting down now. <laughs> oh, who created a scholarship to help women take um, sabbatical. I think this says sabbaticals, I can't see. Oh, that is awesome. I love that. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Curvy Sophisticate. Yes, I am. I am. I am. And you're in the subscription group. So I'm going to tell you all. You all get, you know, all the details. I left my allergy pills. <laughs> it's three o'clock. I need to get this video edited so I can have it loaded for tomorrow. Tonight, I am going to an art gallery just walk around to some art galleries and that's the beauty of art galleries they're typically free a lot of times if you're lucky you can meet the owner times when i'm in paris i've been to galleries i've like met the artist that's always a vibe um if it's an opening you get free cocktails and whores divorce i remember gigi the camera kid <laughs> He was like, horse divorce. <laughs> I need a break in. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping to one of these galleries, I have some kind of event. I can mix and mingle, have some free glasses of bubbly. Door doors. <laughs> yeah. Art galleries are such a vibe. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. And I, I'm strategically waiting to go in the evening because I want to interact with people. I'm hoping to meet, just meet people, hoping to meet people. So yeah, I'm gonna do that and have a dinner. I'm gonna have a nice dinner. I feel like I wanna try a burger somewhere else too. I'll see where I go. When I was in Delaware last week, I drove up to Delaware and just stayed the night. And if you hadn't checked that vlog out after this live, check it out. That was such a vibe. That burger was so good. So maybe, maybe that'll be my thing. A part of my travels when I um because I, I just want to travel a lot around the US and that's what this vlog is about if I ever stop talking and actually edit it it's about um, just traveling more in the US because most of my travels are in Europe I, I don't go to South Africa as much anymore um, the husband won't let me back there <laughs> The memoirs are going to be so good, as I mean. I 
can I leave you all alone for two seconds? Like, as soon as I'm like, I'm like, what y'all doing? What I miss? <laughs> And this vlog is only 16 minutes, 16 minutes. And even this, Mazami, just sitting in silence, like this is making me so happy. Because typically, even if I'm editing, I have to have some kind of noise, some kind of background noise. And I love my music. Music is like one of my love languages. I love music. Like I was the one who always made CDs when we were going out. I always have a playlist. I have a playlist to my life. Like that is my thing. But appreciating the stillness, the quiet, when I stop talking. <laughs> but yeah, even when I edit, I would typically have some kind of music playing. This feels so good. Just this, this stillness, this peace. Create a space where people can come reset. That's what I want. Oh, the tea house. Okay, I'm going to have to check that out. Message me. I have to remember that. I'm going to try to commit it to memory. But that's no guarantee. cannot get this to smoothly transition. It's the best I can do. y'all doing? What y'all doing? Okay. Bizu Bizu Curry Sophisticate. I'm so glad that you joined. You you got it. You can make it these next few hours. You got it. You got it. Okay, let me get to work because <laughs> I'm going to keep looking up to see what you all are doing. Bizu, bizu, merci beaucoup for joining me for just a random live. Merci to everyone who watched, liked, subscribed now. 
the gifts, the badges. I appreciate it so much. So I'm going to get this done and then I will be heading out to a few art galleries. I'll record while I'm out and, you know, create some shorts, get some content. So have a fabulous, fabulous evening. Just if you can, slow down, slow down, just slow down. <laughs> Ciao for now. <laughs>